All right, guys. So today's video is going to be uh, about replacing my my radiator. Um, I actually had a leak on the radiator. You're not going to be able to see it, but once I take it out, you'll you'll be able to see you know what's going on under there. Um, I took I took the cover off uh, just to make it easier. I'm going to have to take the the air intake off. Uh, that's because we're going to have to go ahead and remove the the fans. Um, I already started a bit, uh, like I said, I took the, the top cover off, but I also took the bottom uh, shield off of the car. All right, down here, you can see some of the stains down there from the leaks, but you know, that way it's gonna expose the, the bottom of the radiator. And, you know, it's gonna allow us to get to some of the points that we need to get to, to remove certain parts such as the fan and then of course the the radiator itself with this bracket and whatnot uh, so you're gonna notice that on the passenger side you're gonna have the this tube here with the with the pepcock right here uh, that's so we can drain the radiator obviously we're gonna have to do that before we go and remove any of the of the hoses from it and then eventually we're gonna have to come uh, up front and remove let me see if I that condensing unit for your AC. All right, so let's start by removing the air intake. Loosen these up. Right there. Be very careful to take out your mass airflow sensor. All right, you're gonna want to be careful. This is the part that's gonna measure your your airflow. So you want to set that off to the side. Make sure you don't lose any of these gaskets down here. This one's starting to slide off. That part's done. Let's go ahead and take this cover off. This comes right off. As well as this side. And that's going to grant us exposure to the top here. We don't really have to get in from this side, but uh, well, except to let me show you to take off these tabs here. So you can right there and right there all right so for this next part i laid out a tarp uh, just to be able to protect my pavers and, and whatnot and not let the association uh complain too much about it so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and start draining the fluid now um i have two of these um oil catchers if you will and a five gallon bucket from yeah home depot what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach up under here and you're gonna notice that there's that pep cough right here. Let me see if I can try to get it. Okay, it's 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 right here. You're just gonna turn that pep cough and it's just gonna start draining out. So obviously you're gonna to wanna to do this with some pliers here. Just of it, but just to show you, and open up the, the top, let air into the system. There, uh, there is still a little bit of cooling in there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but uh, most most of it had drained out by the time I I was able to get it back home. All right, guys. So now what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna remove the 
the upper hose um, from the thermostat housing. Okay, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket for this. Um, now, I, I, I'm pretty sure that you guys have seen uh, videos of how to remove this thermostat. Now, fortunately, this is a very easy thermostat to, to remove from, from the vehicle. I've had vehicles where it's been buried deep in the, in the engine somewhere and you, have to, you really have to suffer to get to it. This is a, fortunately a really easy uh, removal. Now, you guys have seen other videos of, of people removing this, this thermostat and they do it without putting any protection around the engine. Directly down at the bottom here, uh, you're gonna notice you have your, your DC battery charging alternator. Now, when you, when you notice from the video, you're gonna see that some of the fluid is gonna squirt out from um, the removal of the of the hose and it's gonna be very minimal we, we actually shouldn't have any any fluid in this hose right now uh, because I actually drained the, the radiator out at the bottom uh, but there is still gonna be some fluid inside of the thermostat housing itself so um, I recommend putting in something to, to protect your electrical components <coughs> oh, excuse me and ideally put it kind of like in a form of a bag make sure that all the top portions of it is you know facing upward and whatnot so that way uh, it doesn't it doesn't have a chance to, to leak out so let's go ahead and remove this there was the first one second set these aside so what we're gonna do here is carefully just crack it and then boom after draining it no no fluid came out so that's good now one very important thing to notice I'm gonna show you with the with the new um, thermostat that I bought uh, let me go into to, to this while I'm at it uh, I bought a stand off of excuse me I bought a stand off of uh, Amazon um, you can see the part number there 48799 in case you any of you um, want to co uh, consider purchasing one now this one is going to open up at 190 instead of the the 180 now the reason I went with the 190 and not the 180 is because when you put the 180 on your stock vehicle uh, without any tuning done to to the PCM at all you're gonna get a fault code yeah a fault code is gonna pop up that you know and it's just gonna be very annoying um, I said I'll, I'll get the 190 for now at least it's better than the stock uh, thermostat which opens up at uh, 203 205 somewhere around that that um, that temperature one important feature to notice here is that you're gonna have this little jigger right here I call it a jigger um, and you're gonna notice that on the one that's placed on, on your in your thermostat housing that the jigger is right at the top here okay you want to place it pretty much exactly in that same position okay so let's go ahead and just simply pop this little sucker out there we are all righty let's take her out the gasket comes out with it it already comes with the new you know with the gasket so let's clean it up a little bit first shall we Now, uh, usually, like I said, when you remove the, the thermostat housing, you're going to have a lot of fluid come out um, because of my car leaking the, the coolant and I drained the, the radiator. You know, there's not really any, uh, any coolant in there. So, go all the way around, pressing her in, making sure she seats in right. And once you put this uh, hose back on, 
which also you should clean the the housing here. Clean that up. Now, once we're ready to reinstall this, uh, you know, back on it'll. Once you put the bolts on, it's gonna create that that seal. All right, guys. So what we're gonna do now is take off the the top uh, mounting brackets here. I already took off the the other side. What you're gonna need is a 10 millimeter socket for this portion. Okay. It's a little loose there. All right. Make this a little easier. Pull her out. Just goes on the same the same way. Right, as you can see, this right here just goes right back on as such, and then you can just mount her back on. Easy. All right, guys. So what we're gonna do now is remove the radiator fan. Uh, you're gonna start off by removing the electrical connection. Okay, and then there's two eight millimeter bolts. One that's gonna be underneath the radiator hose, and then another one that's gonna be over there by the AC uh, uh, hose right down over there. Okay, um, you're gonna notice that there's gonna be some, some mounting brackets down on there. Okay, down at the bottom. It's a little hard to see, but all you do is after you remove them, uh, as well as the electrical connection, you're going to just slide her, or, you know, lift her up a bit, slide her back, and then up and out. So I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. All right, guys. So we're gonna start unbolting the the radiator bracket here. Now, I put a a jack under here uh, because, as you can see there, you have two bolts. I already took off one, uh, but you have two 13 millimeter bolts down there, and then same thing's gonna apply for the other side here. See if I can get you guys up over here. This is a more difficult side because you do have this cover here that you have to move. And you see you have those two right up under there. All right, and it is the, the radiator bracket there. So uh, you just want for, you know, the jack to make sure that when you unbolt it, that radiator just doesn't come down on you. Okay, guys, so now what we have to do is we have to remove the the cooling uh, radiator for the for the AC from the radiator itself. Now you're gonna you're gonna notice there's gonna be three. Well, actually four. Um, there's gonna be. Uh, let me see if I can point it out here. There. Well, you're gonna have one right here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on the. You're gonna have one right here in between the two uh, lines. You're gonna have one on the top, right there. See if I can zoom into that a little bit. Of, you're gonna have one there, all right. It's gonna be on where that where that black protrusion is at, and then you have two on the bottom that look just exactly like that. Let me see if I can show you down here. There you go. That's better. One right there, okay. And then you're. I mean, you know, you're also gonna have one on this side. I'm just gonna have to wiggle this a little bit uh, so that I can get it off. And then you're gonna want to. Uh, place this on top of this support here uh, to make sure that when you do your swap uh, of, of the radiator you know it won't it won't move around and it won't drop down and whatnot so that it won't break any of the of the hard lines okay guys so as you can see I have the fan out I have the radiator out now I gotta take off the little uh, rubber grommets at the bottom of it to mount back onto the uh, bracket or rather put it on the on the new radiator so that way it'll it'll sit on the bracket uh, just to show you really quickly I bought a Sunbelt uh, radiator as you can see it doesn't come with any of the of the rubber brackets um, or the little hose that goes for the for the pepcock for draining so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on uh, as you can see here here's one of the here's the mounts that that the fan goes on 
that I was talking about earlier and that it bolts on by just two two bolts up there so let's get it done all right guys so I got the the radiator in I got the the fan in um, my recommendation is that you first attach the the AC condensing uh, radiator to your radiator and then once that's together and mind you you are going to need the, the the jack or some jack stands or something to to hold to help hold it up um so that way you can you can properly mount them on um then you're gonna you know slide up the the fan and then mount the fan onto the radiator still being supported on the bottom and then you're going to um Mount that on, lift it up, and then you're gonna put the bracket right on it. Here, let me just get down here. As you can see, the the bracket is right back on it here. Okay. I suggest doing this side first, as you saw earlier, it was it's a pain to to get to with your with your ratchet. Uh, equally, if not more difficult you know to put it back in all right guys the next thing we're going to do is uh put on the top mounting bracket uh very easy same thing that that we did before you just bring it in like that and then boom it just comes right on and then you just bolt it on i already did uh the other side partially i left it a, a little loose just so that i can i can move it around if need be uh, but it just goes on real easy, so just go ahead and, and mount that on. All right, so and after you uh, you put the top mounts there, you're gonna go ahead and start putting the the housing on. There we go. And uh, let's maybe need that a little bit. Just a little easier and faster. Remember, since we installed the new thermostat in there, she's gonna you're gonna have to play back and forth with uh, tightening the bolts here because of the new gasket that's on it. That's getting pretty tight. Tight's tight, too tight is broke. Alrighty, and then, yep, well, that just went in, didn't it? <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna have to adjust this uh, this hose clamp. Probably should have adjusted that first. But we'll mount this hose clamp into position to make sure that the, that the hose stays in place. And she's good to go. Then we're gonna fill her up with uh, Radiator fluid, finish putting on the air intake, and she's about she'd be done then. So good to go.